is to them. Uh, our, uh, our charter is to uh, participate in advanced research and try and provide uh, the most advanced uh, network that we can to the research universities and by extension serve the rest of the, uh, of the community. So uh, quickly go over Merit's present, uh, uh, Merit's history. Uh, back about 41 years ago, um, the three major research universities in Michigan uh, thought it'd be really cool if they could connect up their mainframes. Um, since they didn't really know how to do it, they formed Merit to do so. <clears throat> Merit, uh, during most of its existence, has been uh, involved uh, with uh, research and trying to push forward, forward networking and internetworking. Uh, probably our uh, greatest claim, claim to fame uh, is uh, our involvement in the NSFNet with MCI and IBM. Uh, and one of the uh, offshoots of our work uh, with the NSFNet was NANOG. So in 1994, we started to uh, uh, sponsor NANOG to get the operators together to uh, help make this, uh, the Internet work. Uh, and then for those of you who are interested, next month, the NSFNet is celebrating its 20th anniversary in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, and Al Gore may attend. Um, we're, we're working on that. Uh, the, uh, we've also spun off a number of different companies. Many of you had uh, worked for Merit or uh, worked with Merit in the past. Um, so this is Merit's mission. Uh, and where NANOG fits in is if you look in the second half of our mission, uh, initiating and facilitating collaboration and providing knowledge and technology transfer through outreach. So, uh, so even though the, most of you are, are not from Michigan and not that part of our community, uh, one of the reasons that uh, the board uh, has uh, merit in existence is this uh, outreach and knowledge transfer and, and this uh, fostering community and collaboration. Uh, so as a non-for-profit, this is something that we can do uh, in a vendor-neutral environment better than uh, people who have a profit motive and have to uh, serve, uh, serve their owners and make sure they get a good return on investment. Uh, so hopefully you find NANOG to be a, uh, a valuable experience and that it is a little different than most of the uh, vendor-sponsored uh, conferences. So on the next point is where are we going to go from here? Uh, Say so for 13 years we've been uh, doing some pretty neat stuff here in NANOG. Uh, we've gone through some changes. Everything goes through uh, life cycles. Ideas uh, come into existence, uh, get very popular, and then uh, the environment moves on. Those ideas are, are not as effective. So it's important for NANOG to continue to evolve, to be relevant, and to provide value to uh, you, the community. Uh, <clears throat> over the last couple of years, the uh, NANOG leadership has focused on how to run NANOG, how to work through its relationship with Merit, and how to uh, run the organization. I think it's time now for NANOG leadership to focus on a vision for the future and uh, to where, where are we going to bring NANOG? What's it going to try and accomplish? How is it going to interact with uh, all of you? There's been some discussion of this on NANOG Futures, uh, but I'm going to challenge the new steering committee to uh, come up with a vision and a strategy that uh, Merit can implement to make NANOG more valuable to you. For them to do that, there's a number of things that have to happen. Uh, we are the North American uh, uh, Network Operators Group, so I did put Johnny Canuck up there, along with Uncle Sam. Uh, for those of you from other countries, you know, sorry, North Americans in the name. But anyways, we have a vote going on, and uh, the, you need to know who you're voting for. You need to know the candidates for the steering committee what their vision is, what they would like to see NANOG accomplish, and does that align with what you want to get out of NANOG. You also need to talk to the steering committee themselves and let them know what you want to, what you want to get out of NANOG. This is a valuable organization only in so much as it serves you. And if you sit back passively and NANOG isn't meeting your needs, then, well, it's your own fault. But we have a steering committee, we have a program committee, we've got people from Merit, uh, talk to us, let us know what you want, let us know your ideas, participate in NANOG Futures, and uh, help us make NANOG more valuable and a, a better organization uh, that's more valuable to you. Thanks. And last, before we get started on the main program, is Bray Pilzak from Aaron. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is uh, one of our, this is our annual joint meeting with Aaron, so we have, uh, 
today and tomorrow, and the Aaron meeting is Wednesday through Friday. So for those of you who haven't been to Aaron before, I encourage you to stick around and uh, see what the public policy process is about. Uh, good morning. Uh, I have no slides, and I will not take up much of your time. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you that uh, have seen the discussions on various mailing lists, uh, the Air and Public Policy mailing list, the Air and Discuss list, also some discussions on the NANOG list, and also ITF Discuss list, uh, you know that there's going to be a very, very interesting time on Wednesday and Thursday of this week in our public policy meeting. Uh, there are 13 policy proposals that are on the, on, on, on the agenda. Most of these uh, deal with uh, uh, the, those topics that uh, have been discussed. Uh, a lot of them have to do with IPv6, uh, current policies uh, for how IPv6 is, is managed from a registry perspective. Uh, also, uh, there are uh, two uh, proposals that are global policy proposals to uh, attempt to look at what to do with the IANA free pool as it depletes. And also uh, there's a policy proposal about what Aaron should be doing as uh, the, uh, its free pool depletes and how to manage that situation. Uh, there's also a, uh, going to be a panel on, uh, on IP markets. And uh, there'll be other discussions, uh, open mics and so forth. Um, this uh, will also be uh, discussing, particularly on Friday in detail, the uh, proposed, uh, I should say, the, uh, the uh, Legacy Services Agreement, uh, Registration Services Agreement that uh, we just posted uh, the day before yesterday, or yesterday, I can't remember which. And uh, that uh, is uh, actually in response to uh, community uh, requests that says that we need to address this issue, so this is uh, one of the means by which the board is attempting to do so. Uh, your input is valuable, and uh, if you cannot, uh, if you have not made plans to stay over and can do so, please do so. If not, uh, our meeting, as all our meetings are, will be webcast, and you can remotely participate in the in the discussions. So, for those of you that are going to be there or can be there, I say thank you and welcome, and I'll see you on Wednesday. For those of you that uh, will be doing remotely, I'll say thank you and welcome, and I'll see you somewhere or other on Wednesday as well. So thanks.